Hi, I'm Steve Schweitzer. Today's camera phones can take some amazing pictures, but you have to know how to use them to get really good results. Today, I offer some tips on Steve's Tech Talk. Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk. I'm just back from an amazing trip to Aruba. In addition to spending time on the beach, I spent a lot of time showing people how to use their camera phones. Today, I'm going to talk about iPhones, but a lot of these suggestions apply to other kinds of phones as well. You keep an awful lot of private information on your phone, so I hope you keep it locked. But did you know you can still use the camera even if the phone is locked? Just slide up on the bottom of the screen and then click on the little camera icon. Your first decision is, do you want to shoot video or stills? The video options include time lapse, which is great if you want to compress time. In about 15 seconds, this is what I go through to convert my family room into my Tech Talk studio. Slow motion. It's always fun if you want to call attention to an action. This is my dog, Ghost, who thinks he's a kangaroo. Or you can just shoot high quality video. Always shoot video with your camera in the horizontal position. You'll be doing your viewers a big favor. Watching video on a little display is tough enough without wasting two-thirds of the screen. Yeah, I know you can rotate your camera, but you can't flip a TV monitor. Even if you only shoot stills with your camera phone, there are a few settings that will help you capture more pleasing results. For example, notice the little lightning bolt in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Click on it and you can choose on, off, or let the camera decide whether or not to use it. The next setting is HDR. I suggest just putting it in auto and forgetting about it. This is a feature that used to only be available on professional cameras. The short explanation of HDR is that it takes three pictures, then it combines them into one photo, and it has great detail in both the highlights and the shadows. The little clock is a timer. Click it and you have a few second delay before the shutter clicks. Gives you a chance to include yourself in those group photos. Those little circles in the upper right, forget about them. They're filters, but you can add them after you've taken the picture and that gives you a lot more flexibility in choosing what you want your picture to look like. To get the sharpest picture, tap on the part of the screen that you want to be in focus like the flowers or the groundhog. That locks the focus and the exposure. If the picture is too dark or too bright, tap and hold the screen while you drag up or down till the image looks the way you want. This was a lifesaver in Aruba because everybody wanted to have their picture taken in front of the sunset. Adjusting the exposure makes the difference between a picture that looks like this or one that looks like this. If you pinch on your screen, you can zoom in on the subject. Back at the bottom of the screen, you also have an option to take a square picture, like Instagram uses. Finally, there is this amazing pano feature for taking panoramic pictures. Just tap on the camera button once to start recording. Then pan the camera, keeping the arrow on the line as you pan. Tap again when you're finished. To change the direction of the pan, just tap the arrow. To check your photo, just tap the little image in the lower left-hand corner. From here, you can review all your images, and you can make all kinds of adjustments. But that's a topic for another Tech Talk. For more tips on getting the best pictures with your camera phone, visit my blog at IndieBoomer.com. For Boomer TV, I'm Steve Schweitzer.